Now that we have done the analysis of a continuous beam using the moment distributions method, our next step it will be constructing the shear force and the bending moment diagram for the beam. From the analysis result, there is zero moment at the end spans and about 110 kilonewton meter at joint 2 and 3. Our next step it will be determining the shear force in each span of the beam. You can consider the continuous beam as three independent stretches of the beam. No moment at the end and there are fixed end moment as per what you have obtained from the moment distributions method. The beam span it will be in accordance to the key plan which are 5.6 meters, 6 meters and 5.6 meters for beam B124. Based on the free body diagram developed here, use the principles of static equilibrium. You find the reactions at point 1 and point 2. The reactions at point 1 it will be equals to the vertical shear at point 1 which is 108 kN. As for the reactions at point 2, it is 147.6 kN. You will do the same for the middle span and the end span. Since the beam is symmetrical at the center, you're going to expect the values it will be totally identical on the other side. Once you have obtained the shear force in each beam, your next step it will be finding the moment. Based on the analysis result, the moment will start at 0, at point 1. Therefore, there will be 0 moment here. To determine the moment here, you need to get the area of the triangle here. The area of the triangle, it will be half times this height and this width. In order to compute that, you will need to find the locations where the shear force is equal to zero along the beam span. Assuming this is a straight line, you can use the interpolations method for you to determine the locations. The locations found are this. Get the area of the triangle that gives you this moment. And this moment, it will be the fixed end moment at the end of the beam which you obtain from the tables that you done for the moment distributions method. Next, you will proceed to the meter span. These two moments here are this moment. Find the area of the shear force diagram. Get the differences between this and this area. You get this. In this case, negative moment is obtained. That means, instead of having the bending moment diagram in this manner, now the moment it will be at the negative areas. And then lastly, the final stretch of the beam here. Once you have obtained the shear force and the moment, you can now combine them in the shear force diagram and the bending moment diagram. The shear force diagram and the bending moment diagram are very important in the design of a beam. It gives you an idea when the shear force will be critical, what are the magnitude. Same goes to the bending moment diagram. Based on the result here, we know that the largest share that you need to take it will be 147. 
which happens here and here. The shear force at the middle span is relatively low as compared to the end spans. Later, when you need to design the shear reinforcement for the beam, you may design in accordance to the shear loops obtained from the shear force diagram. There are a few ways to do it. You may design for the largest shear applied to all. That means all three structures of the beam are designed in accordance to 147.6 kN shear loop. Now, if you want to save the cost of the shear link, you may also design for the minimum shear link. Based on the minimum shear link, find the shear force that can be taken by the minimum shear link. Let's say the shear force taken by the minimum shear link is 68. You can draw two lines equals to 68. For the shear force diagram within the boundary of that minimum shear link, you can provide the minimum shear link. Beyond that, you will use the shear link that you design with 147.6. This is how you deal with the shear force diagram. As for the bending moment diagram, it tells you where you should put the tension steel bar. Based on the bending moment that you have obtained, you know that you will need tension steel bar here, tension steel bar for the entire meter span, and tension steel bar here. These are the regions of the beam that undergo tensile stress in the beam's cross section. In another word, for the end spans, the tension steel bar it will be the bottom bar. As for the middle span, the tension steel bar is now the top bar. Theoretically, you do not need to provide the compression steel bar. However, for practicality, a minimum of two H12 bar are to be provided as the compression steel bar. Your compression steel bar will be placed here, here, and here, which is at the opposite directions of your tension steel bar. Bear in mind that this example only deals with one look case. Which, based on the question, the load case is maximum, minimum, maximum. You will need to repeat the process of the moment distributions and work out the shear force diagram for the other load cases under the load set that you use. For a typical 3 span continuous beam, if you are using the load set 2, there will be three load cases. If you are using the load set one, you will need at least four load cases. Once you get the shear force diagram and the bending moment diagram for each load cases, overlay the shear force diagram for all the load cases together in order to obtain the envelope shear force diagram. Same process goes to the bending moment diagram. Now coming back to this example questions. Since it is meant for final examinations, normally you will be asked to do one look cases as per specified by the questions. And then you develop the shear force and the bending moment diagram. Later, you will be asked to design based on the shear force and the bending moment diagram. 